Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and I'm a content producer and today I'm talking with Jen Neal who is a communication strategist for the Story Mob and before that she was the PR manager for the Immortals Gaming Club. But to start off with, can you give me a brief professional background on yourself before esports? Sure. Um, my path is not straight as most people are. So I basically, I went to college, got a degree in finance and worked as an accountant for uh, about 10 years. And uh, while I was doing my accounting thing, I was blogging on the side about uh, the Anaheim Ducks, my favorite hockey team, and hockey in general. And uh, during that time, I got picked up by Yahoo mm -hmm. as a full-time writer and reporter. So I was able to leave accounting behind and worked uh, for Yahoo for about four years. Um, Unfortunately, after Yahoo merged with Verizon, they basically gutted their sports program. Mm -hmm. And um, I freelanced for the Associated Press uh, covering hockey for a little bit, and then that led me to eSports. Awesome, so leading to eSports, how did you get involved with IGC? I had a, actually a mutual connection. Uh, IGC CEO, Ari Siegel, uh, was a, used to be the president of the San Diego Gulls, which is the Anaheim Ducks uh, minor league affiliate team. And he and I met on a story about that I was doing about the goals being back in the playoffs, essentially after in their first season. And so this was maybe two years or a year or two years before I left Yahoo. But mm -hmm. um, and I just we kind of stayed in touch because I was like, oh, you're a cool guy. I'd like to work for you one day if I ever had the opportunity. And um, so we all we went on our different ways. And then he kind of e he emailed me and said it after the whole Yahoo thing and said, uh, I can't guarantee you a job, but we're looking for a PR person which would be willing to maybe switch sides essentially <laughs> and go over to PR. And I was like, you know, it's, I, I thought about it. I need a little more stability in my life than the freelancing gig. So, been there. Uh, I talked, yeah, exactly. And so uh, we we talked. I interviewed with like six different people at Immortals, and and basically I was a complete noob to esports. Um, I knew nothing going in and they took a chance on me and that was two years and six months I spent there. So it was uh, it was an incredible learning experience <laughs> and now I'm at the story mob. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it definitely worked out and you've definitely come into esports and, you know, adjusted very well, I would say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It was terrifying. I'm not going to lie. It was scary because I'm like in this room with guys like, okay, I know they play video games for money, which is the classic line. And I'm like, I'm not gonna say that out loud, but I'm gonna figure out what they do and like watch what they do. So I spent a lot of time, uh, we were starting my first year, we started the LA Valiant that year. And I had the opportunity to basically embed with the Valiant for their first um, couple, what were we calling them back then? Stages, stages. Yeah, stages. Like so long ago, stages. So um, I embedded with them. I was. Uh, there during practice, getting to know them, during there in the locker room, during games, in the dugout. And it was because of those guys and their willingness to kind of teach me the game and show me what they do is how I really got up to speed a lot faster than I think I would if I didn't. Awesome. That's very, that's very awesome of your former players that you worked with. Yeah, I'm really, they were a great group. They're a great group of guys just in general. So yeah. I really appreciate them. Now, as a communication strategist right now for the Story Mob, what exactly is that? Well, <laughs> it's very hard to define. Uh, basically, we're a uh, communications and PR agency. One of our primary focuses is esports, clearly. So uh, we have client accounts like any agency does. And I actually work on, I, I would say some of my primary accounts are Riot LCS, mm -hmm. and I work on Evil Geniuses. So we just look to support their uh, PR efforts, announcements, ideas, anything we can do to help support and elevate those brands. Awesome. All right, cool. And now today, when we, the day we're recording this, you launched a new project called Dear Sports, where you talk about how stick and ball sports can go digital with their communities. So can you tell me a bit more about this project? Absolutely. It was a actual passion project from uh, the Story Mob. They are a unique agency in that we're small, but we're mighty and we can produce killer content on mm -hmm. topics that we love. So they said, you know, you want to reach traditional sports. We're in a, an unprecedented time where sports have stopped. Um, actually, my, I have, I've been in the Story Mob's office one day and then we went on quarantine. So <laughs> it's just a totally random fact. But, um, but basically, it, they gave me the opportunity to write something um, that reaches not only esports, but traditional sports and kind of bridges that gap and says, like, 
um, now that your fans are all digital and even some te- uh, leagues are coming back and will still be digital, we kind of give a guide that says, you know, this is how to navigate the community that we've known since the beginning mm-hmm. and uh, let us try to help you make this first step kind of. So uh, we wrote out, I wrote out a majority of the guide and the script for the video and we put it to animation um, with characters from the beautiful weirdos which is a previous guide that the story mob did and uh, we've been really excited with the reception and it's it's just a really great project that i can't believe i actually got to do that i mean you, who gets to do this and then have an animated video made of their words that don't specifically work in like animation like, that's <laughs> That's how awesome this is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a really awesome guide, and I, I got to watch it yesterday, and it's, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh, you. What have stick and ball sports been missing this year when they've been trying to connect to their communities? Because that's a big focus of the guide. Absolutely. Uh, stick and ball sports are really at this cross point where they've activated digitally to a point. Like, mm-hmm. they're on social, they're kind of doing, like, highlights and stuff, but everything activation-wise is about being in person. So we're finding like the NHL and the NBA are turning to their title specific games like NBA 2K and the Shell um, to try to activate and engage their fans. The hard part, and we put this in the guide, is that it doesn't come overnight. To become a streamer um, like Dr. Disrespect or Tim the Tatman, it takes hours of repetitive interaction on Twitch and you- and Oh yeah. And also being able to com- like talk and compete at the same time is it's a skill in a, in and of itself. And we're seeing with you know, traditional sports players that are trying to you know get in on the movement is that they don't have the ability to banter back and forth because they're concentrating so hard on pushing the right buttons. Mm-hmm. So our guide is kind of like let's get these players where they're at. A lot of players play Call of Duty Warzone or they you know some players play a League of Legends let them play those games because they're comfortable with it and you'll be able to see the dynamic um, come out and that personality come out but it's really just about understanding what it takes to be a streamer and and we hope to lay that out in the guide a little bit yeah i think i think you definitely did because like i think what you're talking about like the big illustration was you know you have to make the free throw turn to your screen interact with people you know, banter with them, some of them's going to be criticizing you, and then you have to take another shot, and you have to do it over and over and over, and that's just, it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, you have to communicate with your teammates, too, so if you've got chat that hears your, you know, what's going on inside your headset, too, you're communicating with those people, and we, we use the visualization, yeah, well, that's something else, but we use the visualization, too, of imagine LeBron with a GoPro strapped to his head, like, that's basically what it is, it's like, he has this on him at all times and he can't just stop after an hour. It's like to build your stream, you need eight, maybe eight, 10, 12 hour streams and to get up and do it again the next day. Yeah. And that's a, an incredibly underlooked um, process that I don't think that traditional sports have grasped yet, but mm-hmm. they may hopefully get better at it. Okay, and then um, if people wanted to take a look at this, where would they find it? Uh, just go to thestorymob.com uh, slash extra innings. Cool. All right, now I want to move on a little bit to more on PR side. So many esports orgs, including some major ones, have not had an official PR or communications person. So what are your thoughts on this and why it's important to have one? You know, I found that when I joined Immortals, I was one of the few, like very few, that actually had a, a internal person and they still are really and that's where agencies like us come in I find a lot uh, more uh, like bigger orgs we work with team liquid so liquid has us as their agency to um, are kind of supplementing with the agency style because I don't think there is a real I don't want to say need but if you look at like the org structures and the way that competitions are set up they're mm-hmm. run by tournament organizers and the tournament organizers have their own PR staff so if we were in traditional sports, a NHL game, they would have, you know, the, the Ducks post-game media team or PR team would run post-game comms. In esports, it was looking like we were trending that way with maybe with Overwatch League, but mm-hmm. it's still not exactly there yet. So um, I think it's, it's different for every person, business, um, as to what their goals are, but uh, it, it's just 
there's upsides and downsides, <laughs> but again, like the story mob is happy to offer. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, no, no, continuing on the communication, like what are some of the problems you see in esports when you we have seen that communication from orgs and players? Um, I don't know if I'd say that it's problems as much as this is a growing and dynamic industry. Mm -hmm. People are trying to figure this out as they go, and for those that come in from traditional sports to esports, trying to mirror that program that has been in place that's standard like you wait outside the locker room you let journalists in mm -hmm. players have to talk to media do that that's not in esports yet that's just not here so i think it is still being defined as to what the responsibilities are of the player the organization um as far as communications go and and how that's going to be delivered because you see a lot less pre like press releases in esports um, unless it's like a major business announcement yeah. as opposed to, you know, in traditional sports, you see it for almost everything, um, even in business too, like you see press releases for everything. So it's just a matter of adapting to the industry and what works for okay. the organization. Awesome. And then if someone wanted to be in esports in general, what advice would you give them on their own communication online? Well, first is, uh, Everything you say can and will be captured. Uh, the internet never forgets. This is something I train players on all the time. You uh, can scrub your social media clean, but I guarantee you on your worst day, it will come back and haunt you. So always tweet intentionally, post intentionally. Don't do anything that would make you really embarrassed to have somebody find in basically a job like interview. Got it. Um, yeah, so that's that's a big part of the communications aspect, and and just being open and honest um, with the people you work with, what's going to work, what's not, um, is is really important too, because you you have to be ready for esports to be able to be adaptable on the fly, and that's one thing I think people don't realize and get really burned out really fast in this industry is that you have to be able to like flip from nine different things within like thirty seconds. And yeah. not that it's a bad thing, you just have to be ready for it. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. And then if a student wanted to pursue, pursue a career path like yours, an esports PR <laughs> or as a communication strategist, what would you suggest they do to set themselves up on that path? Well, as, as I said out in the beginning, my path was not straight. Um, I also have a master's degree in clinical psychology, so <laughs> yeah. So that makes sense. I know. I know, right? So my career totally makes sense. I mean, I have a, a I have a bachelor's in film, so, you know. <laughs> but you're like, we're all I'm, I'm at film least right yeah. Now. There's a little <laughs> bit of connection, but uh <laughs> Yeah, like so there's like no connection in what I do, but I, it was what I wanted to do at the time. Uh, but, so basically, if you want to take the traditional route, you can always major in communications. Um, I'm really wary of any program that says they offer an esports degree mm -hmm. right now because the, the industry is so young that it, it's like, what are they going to teach you in a way? So that's that's just my personal feeling is that be wary of that. But if you want to attend like you know seminars and it, go for it. Uh, but majoring in communications, public relations, uh, really, if you want to be really good at communication strategy and PR strategy, you have to write and you have to write and write and write and write and be able to communicate well and effectively because if you can't put together a just an about us for a team page like that, that's a paragraph, this industry isn't for you. And it, it's the same thing that goes for communicating with players and knowing who you're talking to. You don't want to treat them like I said at the beginning, like like I did in the beginning thinking like these are kids playing video games you have to treat them like the professionals that they are. So a lot of that comes through, you know, taking internships that don't have to be in esports, being able to work with people of all levels. Um, just really, you need to find your own way um, to get there because if you really want it and kind of going back to like my example of how I was blogging when I would was doing my accounting work like i would blog i would do my work during the morning and then i would blog the rest of the day i'm not saying do that that is not something i endorse and i'm sorry to if any of my past employers that are watching this <laughs> um, but anyways if you love something that much you will get there you just have to work really hard to do it and and you'll find your way but go to school go to school that's the biggest thing go to school get your degree and write Awesome. And so it sounds like the most critical skills you would suggest to have is being able to write and communication with people. 
Absolutely. This job is not called a communication strategist for nothing. I am talking to people, whether it's reporters, players, CEOs, um, just anybody on a daily basis. You have to be able to uh, basically function in a conversation <laughs> and in a, a proper and appropriate way. That was the most random way. <laughs> Actually, that was the worst way to explain what it was. So don't talk like that. I think that's the best thing I can offer you. <laughs> what not to say? We got it. What not to say was what I just said. <laughs> got to be able to communicate with everyone at all levels of an organization. Yes. Yes. You said it better than I did. All right. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long week, it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And then so uh, just wrapping up, so like what are your thoughts on Scholastic Esports? I think it's awesome to see that they're popping up all over the place. Kids are gaming. There is no question about it. What we need and what I've seen from my experience in working with all of the different leagues is that we need a really good feeder system that traditional sports has, like the, the minor leagues and even before that. And hockey has like nine different levels before you get to the minor leagues. Like. We need that kind of system that gets players not only ready for the major leagues, but also prepares them for life in general. Cause not everybody is going to make it to the stage on ESL. Like you have to be ready for those other opportunities in life, but you can still pursue your passion. If it's gaming, like go and do it. Like you join a college program, join a high school team. The more high schools that are embracing this just tells you the more mainstream it's becoming. So I think it's, a really great opportunity for people to to get out there and and do what they want and and i'm so happy to see high schools and colleges get behind it awesome i i'm also extremely happy i love seeing all these high schools have these programs too and i'm happy the samuelis are getting behind it because they're the best owners in hockey <laughs> all right i'm gonna be I'm sending that clip to them <laughs> yeah please i'm an unabashedly huge ducks fan so um I, I just wanted to say that for the record, and I had to work with the Kings for a while while I was at IGC, and they all made fun of me. I'm just putting that also out in the universe. Well, as a Sacramento Kings fan, I'm not going to be offended because I was the LA Kings, I'm assuming. Yeah, I was the LA Kings, don't worry. I, have, I, I forgot about the Sacramento Kings for a second, so. Oh. It's okay, everyone's forgotten about them recently. <laughs> so the last question, um, what is it you love most about esports? I love the players, to be honest. Working with the players has been the most fun part of my job because I get to see their careers kind of develop before my eyes. Mm -hmm. And being able to take the traditional sports knowledge that I have from being a reporter and really apply it to them and help them kind of essentially like grow up a little bit through this industry has been just a really awesome experience. I love being able to help people and help their careers grow and, and build a brand out of something that they've loved. So that's by far my favorite thing. Awesome. Well, I want to thank and you. you. And you, of <laughs> course, working with you, Jeff. Thanks. <laughs> well, that is all <laughs> I have for you today. So I want to thank you very much for taking the time to talk with me and telling us about communications and PR. My pleasure. I'm happy to do it. And I'm happy to talk anytime. <laughs> well, it is your job. When so <laughs> When I'm able to talk again. <laughs> Awesome. And then uh, if people want to learn more about the Story Mob, uh, just go to your website. Yep. Just go to thestorymob.com. Or you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Ms. Jen Neal. That's M-S-J-E-N-N-E-A-L-E. -E. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, thank you once again and uh, have a good day, everyone. Thanks, guys. <laughs>